Hello again, this is Doug the Two Minute Gardener and today we're going to talk about how to build a concrete patio. So I had a client that needed a big renovation of their backyard that wanted to do a really nice concrete patio. So let me kind of walk you through the steps from the initial design through the actual pour. So this was what their backyard looked like. Uh, quite a few weeds. It was an old uh, rundown backyard with an old shade structure that really was falling apart. A brick patio with lots of broken bricks and broken levels mixed with a little bit of concrete, some weeds, and they had some flooding issues. There is a big slope that comes down toward their house, and when they had really heavy rain, they had some definite flooding issues uh, with the drainage and everything else there. So they basically wanted to scrape this all and start over from scratch. So that's where I came in with this design of a really new, large, elegant concrete patio that could hold both their barbecue and their new jacuzzi they wanted to add and have a really nice seating area with some shade structures as well. So we put it in motion, we scraped the whole backyard, leveled everything off with a bobcat, ripped everything else, graded it away from the house, and that's when we got to the next step, which is of course my one of my favorites, the Big Red Hose Day. Bring out the big red hose and do some fine tuning out of the outline of the patio. And this also helps the contractor get a really good sense of where the drains are going to go, where the outlets are for plugging in all the electrical needs of this outdoor kitchen and the jacuzzi. So once everyone was in agreement on the Big Red Hose Day, the concrete company comes in and they start forming everything. They bring in these bender boards and 2x4s and create the forms that will be the outside edge of all the concrete. They then come back and add rebar to everything and you can also see in this photo the different kinds of uh, drain outlets that are all set up as well. And then the big day is here, it is concrete day. This particular yard needed 24 cubic yards of concrete. So it was three trucks and a pumper. Now the pumper is there because the concrete trucks can't access the backyard. So the concrete goes into the pumper, which then pressurizes it, puts it in the hose, and the hose takes it out to the actual concrete pouring area. And here's how it goes. We have one guy who's basically running the hose and putting the concrete down throughout the entire area where the rebar is. You have another two guys that are on the screeding, and the screeding is in a really important part. It's kind of the rough finishing. That's what those two guys are with a big two by four going back and forth as a motion, and it is hard work. And basically, they're doing a rough finish or screed on this. Then you have the guys with the brooms and the floats and they're doing kind of more of a final finishing on they're trying to smooth it out so the screening is important because that gets the rougher particulates down and the smoother finishing material up the guy with the floats then gives it another go to make it really look nice and smooth and here they are in action again now another important element to this particular concrete pour was the leveling. It was incredibly important given the flood issues of this backyard that everything was sloped toward all the drains. The contractor installed 12 new drain inputs in this backyard, three in the patio. So here you see the foreman working hard with his level to make sure every single part of the concrete patio is sloping towards a drain. Now in this particular case, he put three drains in the middle of the patio because he wants everything to drain toward that and away from the house and away from the jacuzzi. So from there, it would then drain off to the side and all the way out to the front drainage area. So again, it was a big man, uh, quite a lot of guys on this particular crew because it was a large patio. It was about a 1,500 square foot patio, including all the outlying areas, the mow strip, which I'll get to in just a second, um, and other little auxiliary areas. So it was 1,500 square feet of concrete about 24 cubic yards and here is the finished product 
So the guys have done all of their concrete floating and then they go back and do the expansion joints and I showed you that in a previous video. And here you can see the drain inputs on that. So they've cut off the white pipe and they're gonna install caps. The forms are still on it. This was about four hours after they finished all of the floating and edging and expansion joint cut work. And there you can see the uh, mow strip for the far side of where the lawn's gonna go. So in a couple of days, they're going to take these forms off. In the meantime, they'll keep hosing it down to make sure the concrete dries at a uniform rate. And then later in the week, uh, once the forms come off, they'll actually start bringing in the material to start building the outdoor kitchen, bring in the jacuzzi, and the shade structures as well. And this is, again, where the big lawn's going to go for the kids to play on and we'll bring in some lots of great plants so we'll be checking back with this yard quite a bit this month and i'll show you all the different steps of how we've renovated this backyard and uh, i love this little turtle stamp the guys did for the client it turned out really nice thank you to butts construction and to neil and landscape for this uh helping this making this video and make sure to smash the like button that's all the time we have for today thank you so much for watching i'm doug the two minute gardener hit that like button and don't forget to hit subscribe and i'll see you next time thanks for watching